Okay, so you have your circuit board. It's all soldered up. It looks so pretty. You can put it on a shelf and it's an art piece. You've probably played around with it a little bit. Taking your nine volt battery, you plug it in, you flip on the resistance, and oh, that one's a lot brighter than this one. And you flip on the capacitor side and well, they look the same, but you turn it off and well, hey, this one went out right away, but this one's staying lit for a while. And you're probably wondering, well, why? Well, the purpose of this board is to demonstrate what happens when you put things in series versus parallel. Series is pretty simple. It just means that we're taking, so this is going to represent a resistor in the schematic. Series means that we're putting them in a row. Okay, so we have our positive side and our negative side, and the current has to get through this resistor, then it has to get through this resistor, and then it has to get through this resistor. Parallel is going to be something like this. And forgive me, I'm not great at drawing schematics, so hopefully the point does still come across. So here, our current comes in from our positive terminal, and it can go this way, or it can go this way, or it can go this way. So this is parallel because they're going in parallel to each other. See, like parallel lines are like that. So we have series is where they go in a row and parallel is when they're parallel to each other. Probably pretty obvious, but it bears explaining. So if we look at our board here, our parallel components have the power coming in one side and coming out the other actually to the LED. So we can see the difference. Now, how do we determine how much resistance is in here? Well, we'll start with series. We have two basic formulas that apply for both the capacitors and the resistors, and they just kind of flip-flopped. So we want to calculate series. Well, series resistance is, we have C written here, but that could be R, so R total meaning the total resistance is R1. Well, on here, that's 10,000 or 10K plus R2, that's also 10K plus R3, that's 470. Well, we add them up and we get 20,470 ohms. That's a lot of resistance. That's going to reduce the current that's running through the LED by quite a bit. Okay, so what about the parallel? Well, again, we have our total. And now, parallel resistance, we want to use this formula. So we have 1 divided by 1 over 10K plus 1 over 10K plus one divided by 470. I'm not gonna run this all out. You can run it through a calculator and you end up with 430 ohms. Well, you'll notice that 430 is less than the smallest amount of resistance. Kind of interesting until you consider that with parallel resistance, the current is getting Think of it as more options, more ways to get through the circuit. So it actually reduces the total amount of resistance. Now a fun little trick that you can use. Let's say we just had, uh, we'll say four 10K resistors. So our total resistance is equal to one divided by one over 10K plus one over 10K plus one over 10K plus one over 10 K. Uh, now we can work all of that out and what we're gonna end up with should be 2,500 ohms. When you use the same value for all of your components, you can actually take that component and divide it by the number of components in there. So in this case, it's 10,000 divided by, we've got four of them, gives us 2,500 ohms.
So when we switch on our board, we can see that when it's in parallel, our resistance is only 430 ohms. And at, with only 430 ohms, there's a lot of current that can get through that LED, so it's a lot brighter. Over here, where it's all summed up because they're in series, over 20,000 ohms is a lot of resistance for an LED. In fact, I would use about 470 ohms just to run an LED like normal, so it's 20,000 more than we need, so we get a, a pretty dim, pretty boring little light. So that's, that's kind of the idea on the resistance. If you ever forget these formulas, it's right here on the board. We've got series capacitance and parallel resistance. And then if you flip it over on the back side, you've got some instructions if you can't figure out how to turn on the switch. Uh, and then we also have uh, to calculate parallel capacitance and series resistance, you simply need to sum their values. So we've got the information here and if you ever forget, you know, which is which, you can just turn on one of them and go, oh yeah, when it's in series, it adds up. Well, capacitance kind of just flip-flopped. So the reason they're the same brightness is because the same current is going through them. We've got nine volts and two 470 ohm resistors. So it's the same current going through the LEDs, but when we turn them off, and I mean, you can demonstrate this by just unplugging the battery, the same thing will happen. We've got 2,000 microfarad in parallel and 500 microfarad in series. Well, these are all 1,000 microfarad capacitors, so let's do the math. Parallel capacitance, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So we have 1,000 microfarad plus 1,000 microfarad equals 2,000. Pretty simple math. Okay, so what about the series? Well, again, we're gonna use this formula. One over one over a thousand. Sorry, let me turn this off so it's not getting into the camera. Plus one over a thousand. Well, you can do that math, or you can plug it into a calculator, or you can get an app that'll do all of this for you. As you're trying to calculate these things, look for calculators. Doing it by hand initially is good, Eventually, you're just going to want an app to do it for you or an online calculator. There's plenty of options. Uh, but our math trick, right? It's the same value for each of them. So we take the total amount, which is 1,000, divide it by the number of components. That's 2. Gives us 500. Now, I know this seems a little bit complicated. And you're probably wondering, well, why do I need to know this? Well, the short answer to that is it's good to know it. Now, you might not be in a situation where, well, I've only got you know 1,000 ohm and 10,000 ohm resistors, but I only need 300 ohms, so what's the combination I can use in parallel and series to get the exact perfect value that I need? That's an unlikely scenario, but it is good to know this, and as you get into higher-end electronics, these are important things to know, especially as you start developing more complex circuits. Uh, you can also start to do things like with resistors. Well, what do we have here? This is a series circuit. We'll say these are 10K each. We'll just use 10K for everything because it's easier. And then one down here. We'll put our markings there. This is going to our load or we'll just say the negative side. Well, so this is in series. So these two together, let me we'll switch over to another color. These two together are in series. So we add them up, series resistance. So that's 20K. Fantastic. Well, this one down here, this is 10K. Or actually, let's say 20K, just so the math's easier for me. Uh, so we've got 20K up here, and it's in parallel with this 10K. So we, we've calculated that, those two together divided by two, the total here is 10K. So these are important things to start to look at, right? We've got series here and parallel here, and then you could probably have another, you know, on down here, you could have another resistor. So all of this is in 
you know, if this is 10K, then all of this is in series with this resistor. And now the total becomes 20K. And these are just, these are important skills to have. It's kind of like when you learn math in school. You might not immediately see the purpose for it, but at some point you're going to need to use this information. So it's good to have it. And now you've got a nice board that demonstrates this problem. You can throw it up on your shelf. You can show friends. You can show, uh, if you're an adult, you can show kids. You can show your, your nieces, nephews. Give them a little demonstration. It's, it's easy to get the concept. And once it's cemented in your head, you won't forget it. But sometimes it's nice to just have a nice little visual demonstration. And also, here's one of my favorite things to do. Turn on both of them. Unplug it, and the capacitors will actually keep both lit. But once you turn off the capacitance switch, the resistors die. Turn it back on, and they come back on. That's because the capacitors are storing plenty of electricity. They're basically batteries that you can not base. They're not really, but they're think of them like batteries that you can charge up in faster than you can possibly imagine. There's you cannot flip this on and off fast enough where they won't completely fully charge. They just, they charge so fast, it's impossible. Go ahead and try, you know, see if you can flip that switch. Or you can get the capacitance board if you haven't built that one yet. And that one actually has a push button and you can try to beat it and you're never gonna beat the capacitors. They're always gonna be faster. So there you have it, a, a brief demonstration of series versus parallel resistance and capacitance using your new eLearntronics learning board. Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments, send me an email at, uh, here, I'll write it up here since I have this nice little whiteboard here. You can email me directly at Tron. I don't know why I chose that, but there you go, Tron, like electronics or like the movie at elearntronics.com. I read all of my emails. I am not a formally trained electrical engineer. So if you ask me a question that I don't know, I will tell you, I don't know, but let me find out. So send them my way. Maybe I'll learn something too. And uh, as always, keep on soldering, keep on learning.